on Audi TV. Girl Power, we meet Rahel Fry. Ask the Expert, talking tactics with Ernst Moser. Football Fever, public viewing at the Audi Hospitality. And all the news from the third round of the DTM. Round three, welcome, round to, the three. Home welcome to the home of motorsport. It's the third round of the DTM in Brands Hatch in England, where everything is so very British. Not just fish and chips, but also the weekend weather, it's cold for May. But still, this is a very special track in the beautiful county of Kent. Relatively short and simple, but very special. Let's find out why. Welcome to jolly old England. Welcome to Brands Hatch, or as they say around here... Welcome to Brands Hatch! Welcome to Brands Hatch! Brands Hatch to the southeast of London. A cult circuit, the shortest lap of all, just 1.99 kilometres, to be mastered 98 times. Brands Hatch is narrow, Brands Hatch is hilly, Avoid errors. An indie circuit with more right-handers than left. You can't really overtake, so pit stops are crucial. These are the key players. Every movement, every meticulously practiced maneuver could be decisive. Tire changes. Nothing can be left to chance. For perfection, you need precision. And what looks so serene in slow-mo, in real time, takes... ...around three seconds and no more. Enough time to put on four new tyres, man and machine in perfect harmony. Pet stops, more significant at Brands Hatch than anywhere else. Because Brands Hatch is special. A track for tacticians. So, now we know about the circuit. I'm here with Ernst Moser, Phoenix Racing Team Principal. Ernst Moser, last year you took pole with Rocky and won the race with Martin Tomczyk. It was an Audi lockout on the podium. Can we assume Brands Hatch is your favourite DTM track? If you win, it's basically a favourite track, but we have many other favourite tracks. My personal favourite for Phoenix is Sandford. It's an undulating track with lots of right-handers and only two left-handers. What does that mean for the setup? It'll definitely be asymmetric. We'll have different suspension setups for the right and the left. That's the main difference compared to other tracks. And we need to take into account the dip after turn one. Could it be problematic for the tyres? I don't think so. We're not having any tyre problems at present. We have to make sure we don't bottom out. There's a plank of wood under the car this year, and after the race, it has to retain certain minimum dimensions. We have to make sure we stick to the regulations. We've heard that Brands Hatch is the shortest DTM track, which obviously means it'll be very, very tight in qualifying. Is there any way of getting your drivers a clear lap with little traffic in qualifying? We use systems and programs telling us the exact positions of all the cars, including our rivals. That lets me control when to send a car out for a clear lap or into a gap, so he gets a couple of laps without running into traffic. Does the computer decide or is there a human element? Both experience and the computer work together. That's how we decide. I guess it's the system you use in the race to bring the drivers in for pit stops. It's even more difficult in the race, because we have the problem with blue flags. Is our driver being blue flagged or not? We have to find gaps without knowing whether our rivals are coming in or not. And how's our speed on fresh tyres? There are many more factors involved in the decision. Who ultimately decides, the race engineer, you as the boss, or is it the driver? 
The driver reports the state of his tyres and whether he's happy with the car. I can take a quick decision whether to extend a short stint into a longer one. The engineers and I decide from here because we have so much more data than the driver. He only knows about his car, but we see all the sector times and we take our decisions here on the pit wall. It was all very successful last year, so let's hope for a repeat. And one driver who was basically in good shape last year was Rahel Fry, as a rookie. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite as good in the race as she ended up in the gravel. Obviously, we're hoping it goes better for her this year. Let's find out how she's feeling and how she's preparing for the race. She's all smiles. And it's contagious too. Rahel Fry, Audi's young Swiss ace. She used a couple of free minutes at Brands Hatch to check out some motor racing nostalgia. <laughs> and it won't be long before she's leaving tracks here herself. It was a huge honor when I signed a race with all these big names. It shows I've achieved something. It makes me proud and even more motivated to keep it up. Big name motor racing. She's not afraid of it. Last year as a rookie, she often came across as shy and timid. But she has a new composure now. I've matured as a person. I'm more open with people. I'm more heart-nosed on the track. So there have been some positive changes. Cheerful Rahel is also Fry the fighter. She works hard on herself. You need ambition, you need to stick to your targets, and in the DTM, that takes a lot. The folk who know her understand that her power and focus are reserved for her career. Rahel's trademark is that she'll say, we keep fighting, we have a target and we'll fight for that. That's what I find amazing about her, her strength and determination. Now, with Team Apt, she not only has a new car, she's made new discoveries. She's found out new things about herself. You do need to stay relaxed. My new team supports me in that, but also drives me on. I've learned to drink an espresso or the occasional glass of beer, and I couldn't have done that last year. So you learn a lot on top in the DTM. There it is again, that smile, that lovely, contagious smile. Rahel Fry, a likeable young driver who set her sights high. Although she'll have work to do in the race, as qualifying didn't go that well. She was knocked out in Q1, although she was in big-name company, as the same fate befell Ralph Schumacher and David Coulthard. Otherwise, four Audi drivers made the top ten, including Philippe Albuquerque, Adrian Tambay and Matthias Ekström. The fastest Audi man in Q3 was Mike Rockenfeller. He starts fourth tomorrow from the second row. Let's hear from him and motorsport director Dr. Wolfgang Ulrich. Rocky conjured up a really fantastic lap in Q3, and I think he posted the best time in the first sector. But there wasn't anything more to come. He was 700th short of a place on the front row. It was very tight, but it's still a great performance. Obviously, it would have been great if he'd made the front row, but it just wasn't possible today. It's very tight, and everything has to come together 100%. But we'll focus on tomorrow's race, and I think we'll finish with a decent result after starting from the second row. I think I extracted the maximum in Q3, as you can see from the footage. I got the time, the strategy was good, it was important that I went out early, so the small things made the difference. It's hard for us at the moment, in races and in qualifying, and I think we've seen it coming the whole weekend. But I've improved well in qualifying compared to free practice, so I'm satisfied. I have to thank the team, although obviously the front row would have made it easier for tomorrow. That was the reaction to qualifying. England is the home or motherland of motorsport, as we see from the crowds flocking to watch the diverse supporting races. England is also the motherland of football, 
So there was plenty of passionate interest in the Champions League final between Bayern Munich and Chelsea. Here are some of the headlines on the day after the final Kings of Europe. The tense and dramatic match was shown by Audi Media and Team Hospitality. And this is what happened. A new twist on public viewing. Bayern versus Chelsea, the Reds versus the Blues, the drivers infected with football fever, complete with mandatory scarves, geared up for a festival of football, although it was more nerve-wracking than anyone imagined. No mistaking the mood, the crowd wanted Bayern to win, and after 82 minutes, it looked like it would end happily. Match point Munich, but the cheers soon gave way to groans, as Chelsea's late equaliser meant extra time. I really didn't want extra time, but here it is, and we'll have to watch. Bayern need to earn some luck, because luck's a part of football too. But Bayern were out of luck on this particular evening. Robin missed a penalty. The beginning of the end. Anguish and disbelief in Audi's team and media hospitality. It went to a shootout, a lottery to settle the final. Bayern score. But Chelsea score one more. And there can only be one winner. I'm gutted for the lads, because I think they fought really hard. They gave everything they had, and as we always say, the gods of racing or the gods of football decided otherwise. Shame. Maybe the despondent boss can console himself with some proverbial wisdom. You win some, you lose some. You live to fight another day, and it's only a game. Indeed, but we're definitely keeping our fingers crossed for Audi. The nerves are tingling, the focus is totally on the race now. And to keep up the metaphor, this isn't only a game. Audi finished 1-2-3 here in Brands Hatch last year, so we'll see if it was equally good this year. The going-in position for Audi was clear. In front of the packed grandstands, Mike Rockenfeller aimed to use fourth on the grid as the basis for a podium finish. And very early, things looked very good. Mercedes ace Gary Paffett defends pole position, helped by teammate Christian Vitoris' poor getaway from P2. The chance for Rocky in his yellow and green Audi A5 DTM to seize third right at the start. The 26-year-old Phoenix man not the only winner off the line, as Philippe Albuquerque in the blue A5 also moves up. Typically British weather, but the trademark at Brands Hatch is the fast-paced action in the pit lane. That's where Bruno Spengler just about defends second place from the storming Rockefeller. Leader Paffett into the pits. A flawless stop. Nothing was going to stop him now. Rocky wanted more, but Spengler, despite his broken splitter, was not going to be passed on this particular day, on this particular circuit. After all, Brands Hatch is special. At the end, Rocky did make the podium, behind Paffett and Spengler. I was happy with third until he damaged his splitter, which I wasn't expecting. Obviously, I was desperate to overtake him, now I had the chance, but it's almost impossible here at Brands Hatch, unless the man in front makes a mistake, even with the problem he had. It was a bit frustrating, but I'm not suddenly disappointed. I'm very satisfied with the weekend. We extracted the maximum. Thanks to the team, we had two great stops, so I think we can go home happy. After Rocky, another four Audi drivers made the top ten. And thanks to fifth of brands, Matthias Ekstrom climbed to third in the standings. All in all, not a result which needs a drink to seem OK, but a result you can really savour. Here in the motherland of motorsport, Mike Rockefeller's third place marked a much more positive trend for Audi, and it's a confidence booster for the next race in Spielberg. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Take care. See you next time. Bye for now.